pioneering women of the early 20th century Southwest. We're talking about an extraordinary group of women who had an impact on New Mexico. What was the spirit of these times and what was the spirit of these women? Well, the spirit of the women had to almost overcome the spirit of their times. Uh, Natalie Curtis, who's sort of the beginning and the core of the book Ladies of the Canyons, uh, came out west in 1903 and she came from New York. And so for her to come here at all, um, she had to overcome pretty much everyone around her saying, what are you doing? Why would you go out west and you need to stay home and marry and raise a family? So for the women and ladies of the canyons, they were overcoming this uh, culture for Anglo-American women that said uh, they would have no, um, no vision of themselves beyond the home sphere. So they had to be spirited at, a, at right, at, usually as children, to want something more as a woman. Were they groundbreaking? They probably were, and they, they wouldn't have thought of themselves that way. They didn't want to be that. For Say, for Natalie Curtis, she was a trained musician, and when she became 20, 21 years old, and this was in the late 1800s, early 1900s, she realized that even though she was a world-class musician, she had no future. Mm. Uh, on any stage, any concert stage as you a pianist. You just didn't do that as a woman. No one did that. And when she realized that, she became depressed. I mean, she uh, really crashed. And uh, she had a brother who was going west for his health in 1903, and he invited her to come along. And so she brought this experience of music and this background and knowledge of music um, with her into Indian country when she decided to record Native American. So she had a, an ear for music. She could transcribe, she could listen to songs and chants and perfectly transcribe them, which uh, the Hopi called her Tawi Mana, which means song maid or song woman because of her perfect ear. They were astonished that she could listen to a, a chant or a song and perfectly transcribe it and sing it back. You touched on Natalie Curtis. What were some of the other women you were focused on? Uh, I wrote about Natalie Curtis and her friend Carol Bishop Stanley. Uh, Carol is, was really unknown in history. She named and built and founded Ghost Ranch that is now known as the home of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, but it was, it was Carol Stanley's home long before O'Keeffe saw it. Uh, Carol came out west probably because of Natalie Curtis. They met as musicians back east. I also wrote about Mary Wheelwright, who's well known in Santa Fe for the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian. You know, you know they had to have some, mm -hmm. uh, some means to travel on, some family uh, money. They weren't necessarily wealthy. Mary Wheelwright was, but the others were not. Um, because they, they really were leaving a support system in every way, whether it was financial, uh, cultural, social, um, to get on a train, even to come with a brother out west meant um, they were leaving behind all normalcy for a woman and acceptability. What was Clobber's impact on Santa Fe? She was friends with Edgar Hewitt um, when he was overseeing all the exhibits for uh, the Balboa Park exhibition that opened in 1915. At that time, Hewitt, who was from Santa Fe, was taking New Mexico artists and archaeologists and anthropologists to, to San Diego for that exhibit, that huge the Balboa Park opening. And so Alice Clobber was was part of that, and she interacted with Hewitt and all the people he brought from New Mexico. And then when they returned here, she just came back here to visit and, and, and watch them building the Museum of New Mexico, which opened in 1917. So all of these people were friends, and they knew each other, and they worked together, and they had quite a camaraderie that focused on Santa Fe. She helped connect him with Robert Henry, is that yes, how you pronounce it? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. 
she was a painter and she had studied with him in Europe and um, Henry would stay with her in San Diego and she did convince Henry that he should come to Santa Fe and at least visit and he ended up setting up a residence near the plaza and becoming part of that whole expat art scene that was happening and really before World War I. What was it about Santa Fe and the Southwest that allowed them to flourish? I think in the Southwest, for, for the, um, everyone who came here from someplace else, the women and the men, they found an environment in which um, you know, the social uh, boundaries weren't here. It, it was very bohemian. And uh, artists and writers and, uh, and later the, ar or, or, well, the archaeologists and anthropologists lived this kind of new society where uh, the women weren't necessarily married. Uh, people traveled a lot, and meaning they had, the archaeologists were out in the field and so were the writers and the painters, and they were mo moving among native cultures, which I think they found invigorating and freeing. And maybe the sense that no one was really watching the way they would back in Greenwich Village or in Boston where um, if you were raised in a proper family, you only socialize with you know certain circles of people and and you behave a certain way. and And out here, that didn't exist. What do these women help us to understand? They have great stories. You know, they're in, first, they're in great places at great times. They were curious and interested in in what they didn't know. and and so they went out to to find out more about the world and also to find out more about themselves. And I think there are many things that are essentially the same uh, in New Mexico and Santa Fe. Um, even though it's a hundred years later, women flock to Santa Fe still and are very comfortable there. And it still has a bohemian quality that I think modern women enjoy and recognize. And I think in the women I researched, they were doing that a hundred years ago and they had a lot more to overcome than we do today. And so they're sort of mentors and role models and, and it wasn't always easy for them. They have a lot of hardship and um, tragedy and sorrow as well as success and, and joy in their lives. So I, I like the way history can become an example of you know, how, how we live our own lives.